so let's continue the lecture two so we have already discussed rotation now let us move to revolution of earth the average distance to sun from earth is called astronomical unit or au 1 au is equal to 150 million kilometers or it is approximately 8.3 light minute now while discussing revolution of earth we have to talk about zodiac as earth revolves the sun is seen against different constellation and this is called zodiac on september 11 the sun is seen in the direction of leo as viewed from the earth the apparent path that the sun follow against the background of star is called elliptic by december 1st earth has traveled far enough in the orbit of sun and is seen in the direction of scorpius so that is why we have this zodiacs now let us discuss about uh, the axial tilt of earth and the reasons for the seasons you can see earth revolves around the sun and earth is tilted at an angle 23.5 degree with respect to its rotation axis so on june 21st we can say the first day of northern summer with respect to north pole the sun is directly over the tropic of cancer and the north pole have 24 hours of daylight and uh, south pole has 24 hours of night while in december 21st where we call it as northern winter the sun is directly over tropic of capricorn and hence antarctic circle has 24 hours daylight and it can be also called as southern summer the earth axis is tilted at an angle of 23.5 degree with respect to elliptic plane elliptic plane as i have mentioned above it is the plane been cut by the sun as earth revolves around the sun now let us learn some vocabulary related to seasons summer solstice in summer solstice sun is at the highest point above the elliptic that is june 21st and it is considered to be the longest day with respect to the northern hemisphere in autumnal equinox sun is on the celestial equator that is september 22nd at this situation there is equal hours of day and night there is also winter solstice where the sun is at the lowest point below the elliptic that is december 21st and it is the shortest day of the month and there is vernal equinox where sun is the sun is on the celestial equator and we have equal hours of day and night so these days you can remember june 21st december 21st september 22nd and march 28th now let us have a question if the elliptic were aligned with celestial equator what would happen to season choice a each season would last longer choice b nothing they would be the same as now c we would not have seasons at all d cannot tell from the information given
the answer is c because of the tilt there is winter and summer hence if the celestial equator and the elliptic were aligned then there would be no seasons the axial tilt of earth changes over years within 26000 years due to a motion called a precession the earth axial tilt changes therefore the location of the poles slowly shifts currently the north celestial pole is pointing towards a bright star called polaris but with respect to 26000 years it is going to counter clockwise rotate and come back to polaris now now let us learn about moon orbit of moon the moon rotates once on its axis for each orbit around earth so keeps the same face towards earth at all time since moon keeps the same face towards earth all time we call this rotation as synchronous rotation so what is synchronous rotation the moon completes one full rotation in one full revolution around the earth hence moon always faces towards the earth so when we move view towards the moon we always see the same face every time the moon shines because of the reflected sunlight half of the moon is always illuminated by the sun the face of the moon is determined by how much of the bright side we see we can learn three phases of moon one is called a new moon in new moon moon is between earth and the sun in crescent moon less than the half of the moon is lit up from the earth's point of view quarter moon moon is at right angle to earth and sun give us more than half of the moon is lit up from the earth's point of view and full moon as we all know moon is on the opposite side of the earth from the sun now the question is at what phase of moon is a solar eclipse possible first quarter full new or third quarter so solar eclipse happens at a new moon only a small portion of earth can witness each one so let us say that there are three types of solar solar eclipses one is total solar eclipses where the moon completely blocks the sun second is partial one where only part of the sun is blocked then there is annular one where the sun appears as bright ring surrounding the moon so we know the answer right now so it is in new moon we see solar eclipse at what phase of the moon is lunar eclipse found and that is b full moon so lunar eclipse occurs at full moon visible over wide area of earth it has longer duration than solar eclipse now the question is do we observe eclipse every month then no the reason is that eclipses do not occur every month is moon's orbit is tilted about 5 degree with respect to earth's orbit around the sun hence moon usually passes above or below earth's shadow each month so seeing a lunar eclipse every month is not possible so the summary of today's class is the daily patterns of rising and setting is due to earth's rotation the annual patterns of sun and constellation in sky is due to earth's revolution 
the change in length of the day and intensity of light that creates a season is due to axial tilt of the earth the phases of the moon is due to the moon's revolution around the earth so this is the conclusion of today's lecture hope that we will meet in lecture number 3 next wednesday thank you all for patiently listening i will post you the videos and the java links for further workout thank you